a cause for national and family celebrations. What the hell's that like when you're on the balcony? The Queen goes out the centre door, then all the cousins go to the sides. So I'm meeting the cousins, who'll share with me what it means to be part of this extraordinary family. The Queen Mother has said that Mummy was like a third daughter. Yeah. Revealing more about their most famous relation through private letters. With love from your godmother, Elizabeth. Personal photographs and rare memorabilia. So this is all the European families. Nadine is your mother? Yeah, of okay. course, yes. Sharing treasured memories for the very first time. <laughs> I always got a Christmas present. I got Twister. From the Queen? Yes. I'll be learning more about royal life in modern Britain. Um, I certainly was put in um, Queen as a potential partner for Prince Charles. And I get called Lady Mountbatten at work a lot. <laughs> On this road trip through the dynasties. How many would you estimate there to be? So many is not true. And they bred like rabbits. And can I find a new cousin to take their place in the royal family tree? We have found some connections. Oh, wow. And we can confirm. Yeah. Wow. Hello. Um, technically, no, Mrs. Romanoff um, would be my mother. What are you selling me? Oh, well, this is very exciting. I'm on my way to meet my first of the Queen's cousins, Princess Olga Romanoff. As you can see, I've travelled to inner Bulgaria. I'm not nonsense, we're in Kent. We're right in the middle of Kent, Kentish countryside. You can't really stop dust in a place like this. Even if I had a full staff, it would be pretty tricky. Oh. Olga lives at Provender House, which dates back to the 13th century. Often in the company of daughter Alexandra, affectionately known as Poggy. Why are you taking my tea towels and not their tea towels? You haven't washed them. I have. Where? What, these aren't washed. And grandson, Andrew. Mama, Dada. Andrew, can I have a biscuit? Andrew. Princess Olga Romanov. Her great uncle was Tsar Nicholas II, you know, the, the famous last Tsar of Russia, who is a first cousin of George V. They looked almost identical, I think. They had sort of big moustaches. So therefore, Olga is the Queen's third cousin. She's a princess. She's called Olga. The Queen used to take Charles and Anne to have tea with my grandmother, and they apparently had beautiful manners, and I had terrible manners. With no family riches to fall back on, this third house has to pay its way. So Olga and her daughter now run one wing as a holiday let. What are you doing? I'm just putting that underneath. No, because I need to hoover. Oh, so sorry, darling. Now I have to lift up the rug. <laughs> That's why uh, I never help my daughter, because she won't let me in. Ever. And, and she says I'm you know, causing bad, more issues. useless. So it's her baby, and I keep out the way. She does the washing. Which I always said I would never, ever do other people's dirty washing, ever. Luckily, now that this is up and running, this will, should bring in an income towards the 50-odd grand a year to keep the down, to keep the place. Mum, we've got to crackle. Is the heeting actually on? Yes. I can't... What, what, OK. I've turned the radiators down to two. I'm literally boiling. Olga is reputed to be a uh, force to be reckoned with, so uh, that's fun. I like forces to be reckoned with. I'm also hoping that she'll be something of a travelling companion for me. As I explore my way through the world of... The Queen's Cousins. From the house, there we are. Look at this amazing sign. Did he say what time service is on? Hello. Hello. Welcome to Provender. Um, I'm, I'm Alexander. I'm Olga. I, I call you Olga. Please do, yes. And who's this? Yes, this is Andrew, aged 20 months, the youngest grandchild. Hello, Andrew. Look very impressed, does he? Doesn't Not like yet. the rain. No, no. <laughs> Do come in. Lovely, thank you. Watch the slipperiness. Amazing house. It has its moments. I bet it has. Watch your hand. Be careful because it, it, it eats hands. Extraordinary door. It is extraordinary. Look at that. Right, Fast. so I'm going to light the fire first of all because we're going to eat lunch in here and it's okay. really cold, so the fire has to be done first. The portraits in here. Yeah. The woman is my mother in the days. 
There was a man to put logs on the fire before the wood burner. These ugly people are no relation. Granny bought them for wall space because they really are particularly hideous. It would be <laughs> awful to find out, actually, that they were related, but I they was might... always told they weren't. They seem to have had their, their foreheads shaved or something. Something monstrous most, going on. Look at her, very magisterial. Poor woman. Yeah. <laughs> Underneath, there's a photograph yeah. of the king and queen of Denmark, who are my great-great-grandparents. He was known as the father-in-law of Europe because all his daughters married crown heads. One was the Empress of Russia, one was the Queen of England, and his son became the King of Greece. Now, they're also the great-great-grandparents of Prince Philip, the Queen, Constantine of Greece. Into That's the why there's community. all that interbreeding yeah. in the ranks of the royal houses, because you had to stick with your own yeah. thing. Yeah. Olga is an international cousin to the world. Olga's grandmother, Kazania Romanov, was first cousin of the Queen's grandfather, George V. I live in the attic, which was two servants' rooms knocked into one. Yeah. Watch the step, please. Oh, yes. In 1918, Olga's great-uncle, Nicholas II, his wife and their five children, were all murdered by communist revolutionaries. This massacre of the Russian royal family sent shockwaves around the world. George V sent a ship to the Crimea to rescue his surviving relations. Olga's grandmother and her family were among the lucky few who made it to Britain. These trunks, this one was Kazania's, Grand yeah. Duchess Kazania, my grandmother. This was Maria Dagmar's, my great-grandmother's. They came out on HMS Marlborough when they were um, rescued. So right? these were you know? packed in They were packed by haste. servants. They oh, also right. left the pack, other packing cases and things on the beach because my great-grandmother, as she was standing in the bows of the ship, mm. um, said, what are those? And the servants had been frightened that they left all of the silver and stuff on the beach. It's a bit like sort of getting furniture out of a burning house. That's it, yes, but what you rescue first. Yeah. Yeah. This is the library that has to be the coldest room in the house in winter. It's just unbelievable. Now, there's mm. a photograph of Queen Mary that signs herself Aunt May. She had kind of upmarket kleptomania, because she'd go stay in somebody's house. She'd be sitting on one of a dozen Sheraton chairs, and she'd say, oh, I do like this chair, and you'd be obliged to give you her all to 12. Give it. All uh, 12? Well, you had to give her the whole lot, not just no, one just chair. Have one. No, you had to give her the lot. So people got wise to this, and they'd say, oh, God, Queen Mary's coming to stay. So they'd put the good stuff in the attic and bring the more rotten stuff down. But no, she was famous for it. Absolutely famous. That's just and, hilarious. You know, though. outside church. So everybody... I do like that fur coat, and you'd mm. have to give it to her. Thank mm. God our royal family don't do that. But be very careful of your head, because my poor father yes. lived here for 45 years and was always hitting his head. <laughs> you just thought he might have learned. You would have thought, but you know, people don't learn. Salad looks really nice. <laughs> the two tosses. <laughs> Sorry, oh, it's look. taken a while. I didn't put dressing on because I wasn't sure whether you, you would like no. dressing or not. I'd love some dressing. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Cheers. Well, good. Help. How very lovely to meet you. Well, it's good Thank to you meet so much. you. That's grand. No. I'm married I mean, a commoner. Right. I see. That noise, by the way, is the dog. It's not, it's not me. I know, I'm so That's sorry. Me. <laughs> <laughs> what about your wider family? Because obviously you're, you're a third cousin of the Queen. After the revolution, when my yes. grandmother came over, she was first cousin of George V, right. of the Queen at the time, which was the Queen Mother. And I believe that kind of pissed off the Queen Mother. And so his invitations to the palace and all that were kind of... Dried up. Yeah. The nice. protocols were so The protocols were quite strict. strict, yeah. A lot of that is basically a pile of poo. Yeah, uh, and yeah. They thought of it as being a huge thing then, but um, it really, really is um, rubbish. I do feel robbed. In a way, your family and its legacy, everything's been taken away by history. Or do you feel that actually you've been blessed by not having to carry that sort of yoke around you? Definitely blessed. Yeah. I, would, I would have made a lousy imperial um, princess. It would have been a know. fantastic one. I think it would have been great. What do you think? I scrub up well, but, I mean, you don't want to scrub up every day. You want to be smelling of horse, and you don't want to have to be... Um, I know I do. ...tarted up. <laughs> yeah. No scrubbing up needed for our royal road trip around the Queen's family tree. Wow. Now then, <laughs> oh. And, uh, yes, you can regale me with stories as we go. Oh. <sighs> Chance that it's warm. Oh, what a good point. Or perhaps yeah. 
Yes, it's freezing. My ass is No, I'm not surprised. It's exactly. Our first stop will be in Devon to meet a homegrown cousin, a relation of the Queen's father, King George VI, Lord Ivor Mountbatten. I think I was about two inches down. Do you want to walk up? That was clearly the first shot. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> If you're going to shoot any animal, you want to make sure that your rifle is as accurate as possible. If this was the animal's head, I'd be way off. Ivor Mountbatten is a cousin on the Queen's paternal side. Ivor's father, David, and the Queen are both great-great-grandchildren of Queen Victoria. His most famous relation was Earl Louis Mountbatten, affectionately known as Dickie. The Queen was greeted by her cousin, Earl Mountbatten of Burma, who also welcomed his nephew, Prince Philip. Am I right in thinking that Ivor is related to the Duke of Edinburgh and to the Queen? Yes. I mean, that's a double whammy. So am I. Through the Danes. Through the Danes. I love the Danes. Yeah. Through yeah. your orbit of royal relations, how many would you estimate that to be? Second or third, Second or third cousins of the so Queen. Many, it's not true. They bred like rabbits. A rambling 400 acre Elizabethan estate. It was like Downton. Yeah, we had a big household staff, literally just for four of us. We had something like 12 indoor staff. It was crazy. In 1997, Ivor and his first spouse, Penny, decided to downsize and moved to the ten-bedroom Bridwell Park. Where were we in games last time? The last couple of times I've played, I've beaten you. You beat me? Yep. No. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. And you stop, because you're being beaten, and then you, you say you've got a sore knee or something. <sighs> Ivan now shares Bridwell with his husband, James. No. Nope. Ooh, didn't touch the line, didn't it? Didn't. When they married here in 2018, they became the first openly gay couple in royal history. Yes. We met in Verbier in Switzerland. And so we sort of chatted for a few minutes. And he's quite intense. And he said, well, maybe we'll have a beer later. Uh, did I? Yeah, you asked me. Really? I'm far too shy for that sort of thing. Oh, so yeah. He said, maybe we'll have a beer later. And we kept in touch and talked for two, three hours every single night on the phone before we actually met up again. And then he came up to London. To find out more about her, in this, her 95th year. I think we're not far away. Russian princess Olga Romanov and I are heading to Bridwell Park in Devon to meet a cousin on the Queen's father's side of the royal family tree. <gasps> but there it is. Wow. Lord Ivor Mountbatten. My wish was always I could have a bedroom that overlooked my park. Overlooked your park. Not going to get that now. No. Well, you never know. You may. You may. You may. Ivor and Olga are, in fact, cousins themselves, although, until now, they've never actually met. I think she's in the back. Oh, and the lovely dog. <laughs> hello, I'm James. hello. Very nice how to do you do? Yes. Very nice yeah. to meet nice you. Nice to meet you, too. Hello, uh, hello. This is James. James. Come on yes. in. Um, lovely. Thank you. Huh. Well, come into the library because I've got Maybe something to show you, you Olga. Maybe lead the way. Yeah, probably sensible. The decor is fantastic. Oh. So pretty. Thank you. Ivor's great uncle, Earl Mountbatten, the Queen's cousin and great friend, was fascinated by their family tree. Uh, what I wanted to show you, Olga, Earl Mountbatten, my great uncle. In 1947, when he was uh, working on partition in India, yeah. he was working on these relationship tables. So this is all the European families. And I think uh, 175, did I, is where you appear. Nadine is your mother? Yeah. That's, right. Oh, okay. gosh, yes. So that's my father's writing. Huh. He allocated numbers, I believe, to everybody. So that's the succinct answer, exactly what I was asking you in the car. Absolutely, isn't it? So basically, yes, all you actually just absolutely. throw me that volume and I just... Yeah. Well, that is, is obviously homework for tonight. Get into bed. Yeah, yeah good. <laughs> no, I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. So, we yeah. are second cousins? I think we're Third. second cousins once removed. Right. And my great-grandfather was a Grand Duke Michael of Russia. Yes. Who would have been your 
grandfather's brother. Brother. Oh, okay. Right. Sandro's brother. Sandro, okay. Was right. my grandfather. There is a picture of him up there, actually, at the top. When he was very young, then. Yes. How oh, interesting. I've never seen a young photograph of Sandro. It's time for Olga to lead me to it. James and Ivor give me a quick tour. So that, that's my father. As first cousin and close friend of Prince Philip, Ivor's father was best man at the Queen's wedding. The bridegroom, Duke of Edinburgh, was ready to make an early start. As it happened, it was a little too early. So, with his best man, the Marquis of Milford Haven, returned indoors until the appointed hour. And he was best man. Right. Yeah, and, uh, and he's just about the most dashing person. And here's a was. picture of him there. There he is. Nice. Yeah. And you know the story of her bushy? Yes, I do. It, it disappeared. Just, no, it never found. Nobody ever yeah. knew what happened to it. Yeah. <gasps> Actually, it's interesting. I mean, you never really noticed that. Yeah. But normally, no, a bride would I think, always be holding a I think they recalled everyone. Okay. They did. did I did. more they? photographs off? I think the florist was dispatched. Yeah. I don't it's know. Extraordinary. I should imagine the name Mountbatten carries more weight, actually, than any title. It's better known than, I even than Windsor. Well, like, it, it does, and uh, as example of, of, of my brother, who's a Marquis of Milford Haven. Yeah, but, um, no one uh, gives the monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, carry on, carry on. <laughs> ah. But, James, this is the big question. So what's, what title do you get? I don't. Well, I mean, this is, a, this is an issue. I mean, if you wanted to stamp your feet, you presumably could. Well, I mean, I get called Lady Mountbatten at work a lot, and I get curtsies and all sorts. <laughs> It's just sometimes you're in the mood for it, sometimes you know, you and sometimes, sometimes you're having a rotten morning and yeah. some, <laughs> somebody flies out the door and dips into a curtsy and you just want to be right. <laughs> Up until the late 90s, Ivor had a full-time staff, but these days, Queen's cousins have got to get their hands dirty. We've got some jobs to do. Good. Tell, Tell me what You're going to do. follow us in the buggy. Ivor and James run a wedding business, a cafe, and do most of the States maintenance work themselves. Is that de deer poo? Yes, that is deer that poo. That is deer poo. Yeah. So these are all to come out. Yeah. But well, well they're tricky though. They are. I see what you mean. And mind your back and your knees. I've cooled my knees. Good smell, isn't that? We've got another pair of waders. I should go. Ah, get those. What do you think? Oh Lord. Oh, 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 no, hang on. Oh. This, presumably, is exactly what you imagined life as a member of the, of the extended royal family would, Absolutely. would entail. Yeah, no surprises here at all. Yeah, literally Go knee back. deep in shit. Knee deep in shit, stench. I thought there'd be a lot of people around to do this sort of thing. Flunkies are there, none. Oh. Very thin on the ground. This. <laughs> Welcome to my world, Xander. Come on. It's done nothing. No, no it's done nothing. You're completely right. <laughs> Total waste of time. Yeah. <laughs> it turns you away. <laughs> now I try and move. Yeah. I have a bath. It's nap time. It's nap time? Yeah. And then we re reconvene for drinks. Yep. Love. After a quick refresh, it's time to get ready for dinner. But this isn't quite your average Saturday tea time. There's a chef in the kitchen preparing our supper. And I've been told the dress code is a smoking jacket and no tie. So I've brought my best with me. Cheers, guys. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. I have spotted, there's a photograph over there of the palace. You're so good at being hospitable and lovely that I, for a moment, forget that I'm in the company of royalty. Oh, rubbish. And then I spy a little photograph like that. You go, oh, Lord, yes, I remember now. <laughs> I remember why I'm here. <laughs> what the hell's that like when you're on the balcony there? I mean, that's quite a thing. Isn't well, it? that was me in 1967. So the invitation came, saying, please, yes. will you come for... It was always by uh, Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, because as a senior um, lady, yeah. she was in charge of the Queen's birthday parade. Which is true. So she's in charge. And, of course, you know, the family's really got very large, so we don't go anymore. Are you told where you're going to stand? No, no, no. But, I mean, you know, the Queen goes out the centre door mm. with the immediate family, and then all the cousins and the more distant cousins would all go to the sides, and it was just a matter of course. So there's not like the little sort of footmarks saying... No, no, not at all. Yeah, right, I see. But, of course, you know, uh, the, the children 
um, would all just scamper out, and you'd always have the the, the fly past. All the kids wanted to, to look at that and get in the best positions. So yeah. they were sort of barging through to the front. Yeah, that's you know that was the best kids, isn't it? James, what what's it like for you joining this wider royal family, and then joining Ivor's family? Obviously, uh, I'm not a dad, but now I'm a stepfather. Having them in, in my life has just been is amazing. James never really wanted to get married, and yeah. I pushed him only because I wanted to validate him and give him a position, because it couldn't have been easy mm. being Ivor Mountbatten's boyfriend. So you think that that means that you're on equal terms, yeah. doesn't it? And also, this is, a, this is a bold and brave new step for the extended royal family. I mean, you're the, you're the first same-sex marriage in the royal yeah. family, I think, aren't you? In any, yes. in any, any, any royal, royal family, dynasty, really? absolutely. Really? I've made history. That's brilliant. You've made history. Oh, no. There we go. That is on a... Hello, Mr. Mr. Sir. Am I being interviewed? <laughs> Although no official statement was made on this historic moment, Ivor and James's nuptials had the full blessing of the whole royal family. So this is a cauliflower soup served with Parmesan beignet, roasted scallop, lemon thyme oil. Wow. Mm. That sounds fab. Wow. Oh, absolutely. Delicious. When you are together as a family, and when you've come in from the balcony, mm -hmm. is it like a normal family? Yes, is it absolutely. Just complete... And that's what everybody yeah. seems to forget. We all have our ups and downs. Of course. Everybody has course. their own internal arguments. And it's the same anywhere. But the formality is dropped. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. But of course, you must, you that's always... You. you will always remember that the Queen is the Queen. The Queen is the Queen. And uh, what's the protocol with the Queen? What do you call the Queen? Ma'am, ma'am. You would say Your Majesty to begin with, um, and then always ma'am. That's just normal. Yeah. It's like when we went to yeah. school, we would always call the headmaster sir. Sir, of course. Absolutely. You, you wouldn't never. think anything of it. It was just sir. Yeah. <laughs> you go up to Balmoral? Do you go to... Uh, once, uh, you know, uh, Prince Edward is a... Is a, is a uh, we were all at school together at Gordonston. Gordonstown is the royal choice, the school in northeastern Scotland to which the Duke of Edinburgh went himself. Prince Charles is said to have enjoyed as good a wish. And I have to say, I loved it. Did you? Oh, I was really great question. Question. Oh, yeah, good. It was really it was good. good fun. But, you know, schooling has so changed over the years. Mm. I wouldn't send my children to the north of Scotland. But when we were young, parents didn't really have an awful lot to do with their children. You know, and I think it was a fabulous school because it taught us a lot of independence. We all learned to sail. We would go off all around the north coast of Scotland, learning to you know, get on in close confinement. Uh, I loved it. Yeah. Really loved it. Well, I've thoroughly enjoyed this somewhat unique evening, but I'm itching to get back on the road with Olga, as I'm hoping she might spill the beans about her history with Prince Charles. God, I was so virginal. <laughs> I'm on a road trip, hoping to get to know Her Majesty a tiny bit better through the eyes of her family. So far, I've met a cousin on the Queen's father's side of the royal family tree. Oh, shite. My language gets worse and worse as we move. And, of course, an international cousin, my travelling companion, Russian Princess Olga Romanov. Oh, fuck. Now what am I going to do? <laughs> I mean, is there still a fairy story thing that attaches to royalty, do you think? Well, yes and no. Um, it all depends how many times they um, tell you about their um, problems on television, which I, yes. I'm afraid I'm not very keen on. Yes, or view on the, on the Sussexes, for example. Not, not great. I mean, the Queen's never sat there and said about anything that makes her miserable, has she? She's yeah. always got on with it. She gets on. The most she ever did was that Anna's horribly... Oh, yes, yes. Which I thought was wonderful. I think a bit of mystique and, and all that is, is a very good thing. Oh, okay, now we're driving round and round the green. Oh, yeah, oh, there we go. Shit, fuck. Okay, sorry. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> ah, dear, dear, dear. That was our thing. Just time for one last cuppa with Olga before I leave her to meet my next Queen's cousin. Beautifully driven, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. 
Weren't you being lined up as potential partner for Prince Charles? Um, I certainly was put in um, Queen as a potential partner for Prince Charles. They did articles on the five foreign princesses that possibly could marry. OK, when they were making, putting that list together, what do you think the things they were looking for? A title, foreign, um, breeding, yeah. and um, possibly, because I was 17 and they were all quite young, a virginity. Yeah, go on, let's give her the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> I was definitely, doubt she I, goes. God, I was so virginal. Uh, so that, was, that, that sort of ticked the boxes. Yeah. You don't suppose someone in the palace reads these articles and puts them in an envelope and puts them under Prince Charles's door? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> I'm in Norfolk to meet a cousin on the Queen Mother's side of the family, a Bose lion. Around the corner there are some nuts, all in pots. Who also happens to be the closest of the Queen's cousins I'll be meeting. Is there anything else for you? Uh, that's everything, thank you. Victoria Pryor is the great-niece of the Queen Mother. Her mother, Margaret Rhodes, was the Queen's first cousin and closest companion which makes Victoria the Queen's first cousin once removed. She's also the Queen's goddaughter. I don't suppose anyone in Cry knows that the person who's serving them their delicious, fresh, baked cakes over the counter is the Queen's goddaughter and, indeed, first cousin. But uh, that's, I imagine that's probably how Victoria likes it to be. Can I get an um, Eccles cake, please? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I think what will be interesting when meeting Victoria is she's a Bose lion, so therefore she comes from the family side of the Queen. She's not from the formal side, the royal side. And I think that's going to be fascinating. Victoria. Ah, oh, hi. Hello. Hi. Nice How to lovely. Meet you. Look at Do, this. I know, it's amazing, isn't, isn't it? Come wow. in. Come How in. exciting. Thank you. Oh, so this look is at this. Fair. This is heaven. Great hunks of cake. You've got to have hunks of cake. Has the Queen been here? I have to ask. No. She did say she must come, but it's too difficult. You'd have to close all the roads and you'd have to yeah. do this. And, yeah. you know. Sophie Wessex has been few, quite a few times. Yeah. Nobody notices her. She just, just comes in looking down. like yeah. she's just one of the yummy mummies. I suppose a lot of people would imagine that if you're, if you're a cousin of the Queen's, you therefore wear a tiara all the time and of course. forever you know, followed by footmen and, <laughs> and travel anywhere in a, in a coach. Um, but, in fact, you're working six days a week <laughs> supplying food to the, the people of Cly. I mean, that's... Yeah. We're all just perfectly ordinary people. The Queen Mother and my granny were very close, and the Queen Mother was unbelievably fond of Mummy and yes. her siblings. So she spent so much of her childhood playing with the princesses. And they were almost like sisters, really. I mean, Mummy really really loved the Queen Mother. Yeah. And the Queen Mother has, in the past, sort of said, you know, that Mummy was like a third daughter. Yeah. Victoria's mother, Margaret, was the Queen's best friend and closest companion. From childhood holidays right up to Margaret being the Queen's bridesmaid, the two women shared their whole lives together. Sandringham isn't that far away from here, is it? Mummy never stayed with us. She always stayed at Sandrium. Really? <laughs> it's so much more comfortable, darling. <laughs> what I think so fascinating is that being a Bose lion, you're very, very, very close to the royal family and completely normal. Yeah. <laughs> you're, God, you're yes. the, you know, your relationship with them is just like any family relationship. Yeah. They just it's happen occasionally to have to run off out through that door and wave from a balcony yeah. and then back they come in. You look at a picture like this, which I have to say is one of my favourite pictures of the Queen with your mother, it kind of sums it all up. I know, just That's the total normality. Total normality, and look how happy she is. Well, they're both in Scotland, so yeah. that makes them both happy to yeah. begin with. Yeah. And they are showing off their shoes <laughs> that they had made in the 40s <gasps> together. They're identical shoes. Just delightful, because you all, your eye almost passes over, and then you go, Whoa, that's cool. It's I know, it just looks like two yeah. slightly elderly ladies in their kilts. Yes. I mean, the Queen would have loved just to have been a country yeah. lady yeah. with her animals. It's amusing the way she enjoys this, isn't it? Thank you. You know her, though. Yes. From a very tender side to her, that obviously yeah. is not the public side. No. I mean, for example, what do you call her? Oh, ma'am. 
Ma'am. Yes. Mummy called her Lilibet, but we call her Ma'am. Ma'am. If she's staying, then first thing in the morning you curtsy, and then you don't have to curtsy after that. Really? See. Goodness. Etiquette. That is the etiquette. <laughs> Look. And that's that. just both of them looking heavenly. Heaven. That's just lovely. It is really isn't nice, it? isn't it? Heaven. Putting the world to rights. Yeah. Oh. I mean, she's incredible the way she looks after everybody. You know, I mean, she looked after Mummy. You know, she was so good. At the end of 1980, when my father hadn't been terribly well, mm. the Queen asked her if she wouldn't mind living in suburbia. And Mummy was like, yeah. And she said, well, there's a house in the Great Park, if you'd like it, which was a godsend. Yeah. And, you know, Mummy was back in the bosom of her family. Yeah. That's Mummy and the Queen Mother. I'm not sure where that is, actually. She would come and have a swift Probably. alcoholic. Dubonnie, Dubonnie and it. And it. It was lovely. <laughs> this is our wedding photo when John and I got married. Yeah. So that's at the Royal Chapel in the Great yeah, Park. Yeah. yeah, I mean, a lot of the time people look and say, oh, that's a really nice wedding photograph. And then they go, oh, hang on a minute. Hang on a moment or two. <laughs> <laughs> No, she used to, I mean, I always got a Christmas present. Did you? Yeah. That's pretty always. amazing. Always. And I got a set of Winnie the Pooh books. Very important. I got Twister. Oh, one. from the Queen? Yes. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> oh, she goes even higher in my estimation now. <laughs> Do you think she sat up with her Argos catalogue? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what with Victoria? Um, yes, I wonder Christmas. that. Um, look at these lovely letters. This one was when we asked her if she'd come to my wedding to John. I've marked down in my diary the date of October the 3rd for the service of Blessing and Royal Lodge Chapel and hope very much I'll be able to come as it is down to be a Saturday when I'm at Windsor. I hope you've all been enjoying your time up here. So this is Balmoral, I suppose it's yeah. Balmoral there. The, the midges yesterday at the log cabin were a nightmare for the little children. It was lovely to see you at the Gillies Ball with love from your godmother, Elizabeth. Oh. That's very lovely, Elizabeth mm. R. Yes, so Elizabeth R, yes, mm. not me, Elizabeth R. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's no. uh, that's just one that just, you know, thank you for me writing to her. Dear Victor, I much appreciate your thoughts and sympathy at the death of my mother. Mm -mm. We must all be thankful for the encouragement and pleasure she gave so many during her long life. That lovely. Because mm. Mummy was, Mummy and the Queen were, you know, at her bedside when mm. she died. To have been through the and bad, you know, mm. all those incredible bonds they, have, they must have shared. And it's this bond that makes Victoria the closest Queen's cousin I'm meeting on this journey. But are there others out there who don't yet know they can count this woman as their cousin? I've been immersing myself in the extraordinary world of the Queen's family. 
these first pictures were to capture the imagination of the world. So far, I've met cousins from three branches of Her Majesty's family tree, which can be traced right back to King Alfred the Great in the 9th century. So, with such a huge family, how many of us, Joe Public, could also be related to the Queen? Apparently, one in 12 of us believe we might be. Laura. Hello, Hi. how do you do? Nice Alexander, to meet you. And you. Um, now, there's well, so much to talk to you about. I'm in Oxford to meet Laura House, a researcher from Ancestry. So if you wanted to find out about your own ancestry, let's say you had, I don't know, maybe there's a rumour flying around, old Auntie Molly used to say that oh, we were all descended from good Queen Bess. Uh, how often do you find those are rooted in truth? More often than not, they are not true. Oh, really? I was about to nod sagely, but I thought you were going to say, yeah, more often than not, they're true. I was going, yes, I thought that, they're not true. Often oh, really? things will get passed down and it starts with a grain of truth. And then well, from one generation to the next, it gets exaggerated a little bit, oh. and then a little bit more, until it becomes a completely different story. However, now and again, you do find that there is some truth in the story, and that's always really exciting. Oh, and believe me, it's a pretty big moment when you find out that you're related to royalty. And we can go back all the way here to um, William the Conqueror. However distant, my... <laughs> It's just that this is this is absurd.
Scotland, you are also descended from Prince of Henry VIII. Yeah. So you are a Tudor, a Plantagenet <laughs> of York. <laughs> you are a Princess of Scotland. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Oh, it's all true. It's, it's all, all true. It's all, oh, 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 you know, so there's probably some fantastic story made up in the Victorian times. Isn't that extraordinary? <laughs> so is. there you are. You're, you're a cousin of the Queen's. I've spent this entire oh, wow. show meeting cousins of the Queen's. Yes. And how lovely to meet another. Would you oh, like to know exactly how closely related you are to the Queen? <laughs> OK. <laughs> you are the Queen's 13th cousin once removed. 13th cousin once removed. You are, in fact, related to the Queen in several different ways. You are also connected to her through her Bose Lion side through Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. Oh, OK. So you are related to her on both sides of her family. You're a double cousin. <laughs> double cousin? What about that? <laughs> double hey. cousin. Can... Oh, well, you know, I'm surprised she doesn't invite me you around can take your pick of which side of the church to sit on at royal weddings. That's amazing. Yes. <laughs> That's quite an exclusive group. It is. Because they tended to marry within the nobility. Yeah. So it's pretty special. It's so brilliant. How proud do you think your grandfather would be to learn all this? Oh, I think, I think he would be over the moon about it. He never doubted it. Second, he was he was absolutely convinced of it. I think the rest of the family will be so excited that I'm. <laughs> Won't they? So I'm so glad it's true. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> well, I feel I know Her Majesty just a little bit better after spending time with some of her nearest and dearest. And as Kathy's story proves, there may just be a little bit of the Queen's DNA in all of us.